Hello and welcome, dear students, the third stage, the uh, College of Arts, University of Umba. Um, the speaker is uh, Assistant Prof. Dr. Yasser Absitar, and uh, and actually we think that this is the last lecture to be uh, delivered for you. Uh, it is supposed that in this lecture we discuss uh, the third. Uh, uh, th that is the third chapter in this uh, in the semester, but uh, it is uh, chapter eight, uh, the book of Giorgio, all the study of language. And uh, actually, uh, the this chapter is uh, entitled uh, syntax. And actually, uh, as the ideas here presented in this chapter is actually hard for you to understand and actually uh, it needs more elaboration and more discussion uh, and uh, um, we think that uh, this discussion or this elaboration should be face to face and actually we, c we cannot do this uh, uh, for, you know for the uh, present circumstances uh, so instead of uh, discussing uh, chapter 8 here we'll uh, uh, discuss chapter 9 that is semantics and actually it is more more easier for you and more beneficial for you it's good for you to have an idea about about semantics uh, so in this lecture, and actually uh, it may be the, the, the last lecture, uh, we will discuss semantics. Okay, there is the study, the study of meaning, the study of meaning. Okay, so what is semantics? Actually semantics... Uh, as uh, it is defined here it is the study of meaning of words phrases and sentences the study of meaning of words words phrases and sentences actually the the main word in this definition is the word meaning but until this moment we don't have a specific we don't have a specific definition for the word meaning but we have types of meanings to understand meaning or what's meaning we have to understand the types of meaning okay I'll give an example uh, for example the word hot the word hot when you check when you check the uh, the meaning of hot in the dictionary you may fi find uh, high temperature for example high temperature but uh, so what high temperature What's the relation between this word hot with the other words within within uh, the sentence? And what about the other meanings attached to the word hot, such as uh, summer or wearing less clothes, or maybe when I say it's hot. We, we should uh, turn on the air, air con or fan or maybe open doors and windows we will not see see such meanings in a uh, in a dictionary for the word hot so actually it's very difficult to define even the word meaning so we have just to study the types the types of meaning types of meaning so What's required here in this page is to uh, know how could we define semantics. So it is the study of meaning of words, phrases, and 
sentences. Okay, so now we will go to discuss meaning. Actually, uh, as we have said, it's very difficult or sometimes impossible to define meaning. To define meaning. We have here to understand more what's meant by meaning. We have to differentiate between two types, two types of meaning, conceptual meaning and associative, associative meaning, conceptual meaning and associative meaning. Okay. In the study of semantics, we are concerned, concerned with the conceptual meaning the conceptual meaning what is meant by conceptual meaning simply it is the dictionary meaning the dictionary meaning for example when uh, you have encountered a difficult word okay and you go and check check up the uh, the the meaning of this word in a dictionary so conceptual meaning okay is concerned with conceptual meaning uh, the, sorry the dictionary meaning for example here we, we have been given an example the word needle the word needle okay when you check up the uh, the meaning of the word needle in a dictionary you will find thin sharp steel instrument okay this is the conceptual meaning or the dictionary meaning so it is the basic meaning or the essential components of meanings okay it is the literal use of the word the literal the literal use of the word what about the associative meaning okay the associative meaning okay when you check the meaning okay thin sharp steel instrument you will not find you will not find pain illness blood or drugs or thread or knitting or hard to find especially in a haystack Okay, so these are associative meanings. You will not find them in a dictionary. You will not find them in a dictionary. It is attached to the uh, attached to the uh, meaning of the word needle. So, for example, uh, when, we, when we go back, yes, the example heart, okay, as we have said, okay, you may, uh, uh, okay, in the dictionary, you, you may uh, find the uh, dictionary word for word heart, uh, for example, high temperature, but you will not find, you will not find, for example, summer, or uh, uh, wearing less clothes or for example uh, in, in a room when you say it's very hot here and you mean for example to turn on the aircon or, uh, or, or the open the doors and windows you will not find these words so these words these meanings are the associative meanings okay I um uh, i think it's enough here so conceptual meaning is a dictionary meaning associative meaning okay those meanings attached according to the speaker or the listener according to the uh, type of communication between the speaker and the listener okay so we have to know what uh, or how to differentiate between the conceptual meaning and the associative 
meaning okay uh, I'll skip I'll skip uh, semantic features it's less important less important and also semantic roles less important it's just a way of naming it's just a way of naming the relations Bet uh, between uh, or among the uh, the words within within a sentence, just a way of naming the roles of words within a sentence. Less important, less important. You can skip. Okay, I'll come to something very very important, and even it's important for you for, uh, as students when you try to finish uh, your search paper inshallah in the next year inshallah for all uh, you have you have to have an idea about lexical relation that is the relation among words okay the relations among words the relations among words so we'll start we'll start we'll start with synonymy we'll start with synonymy what's required from you as students is to underline the definition of every single lexical relation in addition to some examples some examples given here in every single uh, uh, point uh, so synonymy here it is somehow sameness in meaning sometimes they they define synonymy as sameness in meaning that is two words two words have similar meanings two words have similar meanings this is one of the definitions but but uh, actually um, it is not fully similar it's not fully similar there is um, there is a difference there is a difference in meaning in the use of the words okay so the de definition of synonymy here, here is two or more so it's not just two words we have more than two words they have okay they have the same meaning two or more words with very closely related meanings okay so this is the definition the definition of definition of synonymy and we said that it's not fully similar okay so as you can see here the definition very closely related very closely related meanings examples yes almost nearly big large okay um, for example big large huge gigantic gi or giant uh, so these are in addition to okay we, uh, they have the same meaning big large huge okay broad wide okay there are there is a, a close relation in meaning buy purchase cab taxi car automobile coach sofa freedom liberty freedom liberty okay they have okay um, closely related meanings closely related meaning but actually uh, the problem here is that sometimes we cannot exchange sometimes we cannot exchange meanings so th they are not fully similar in meaning they are not fully similar 
in meanings we have some examples here that we cannot exchange me uh, between uh, exchange words in some sentences so they have different actually uh, different meanings so this is synonymy and actually every student in the department of english okay should have an idea about those lexical relations they are important for for future research okay uh, then we will come to antonymy actually antonymy is to the opposite of synonymy antonymy we have uh, words which are opposite in meanings for example when i say hot cold okay they have opposite meanings but actually uh, um, we um, we cannot uh, sometimes they are not fully opposite they are not fully opposite so we'll talk about gradable antonyms and non-gradable and non-gradable antonyms so what's ant antonym two forms with opposite meanings two forms this is the definition of antonyms two forms with opposite meanings okay we have some examples here live dead big small fast slow happy sad hot cold long short male female married single old new and the last are least of the examples as we have said uh, we have what they call it gradable gradable antonyms and non gradable antonyms gradable antonyms and non gradable antonyms for example uh when i say big i can say bigger and biggest so this is gradable antonyms small smaller smallest so this is gradable we have comparative comparative adjectives and superlative adjectives Okay, so I can say big, bigger, biggest, small, smaller, smallest. This is gradable antonyms. But uh, also we have non-gradable antonyms, non-gradable uh, antonyms. So for example, dead or life. I cannot say I cannot say deader and deadest okay we have just uh, okay two opposites two words one opposite to the, to the other for example dead or life I cannot make it gradable I cannot make it gradable for example here male female married single true false i cannot say a truer a truest and false false are false okay they have we have just one word is opposite to the other okay we'll come to the next hyponomy hyponomy the meaning of uh, the lexical relation hyponymy is that as the um, definition here okay uh, the meaning of one form the meaning of one form is included in the meaning of another the meaning 
of one word, one form, is included in the meaning of another. Okay. We have here some examples. Animal, dog. Animal, dog. Dog, poodle. Also, we have vegetable, carrot. Flower, rose. Tree, banyan. So, the dog is included within... Uh, the dog is one type of animals. Dog is one type of animals. One type of animals. The poodle, actually, it is one type of dogs. One type of dogs. So, this is the relation. One form, meaning of one form is included in the meaning of another. Uh, uh, actually, uh, actually, the uh, the uh, the main idea here is inclusion. Inclusion. That the meaning of one word is included, included in the meaning of another. So, we have here the concept of inclusion. Okay. So, to understand the uh, the lexical, lexical relation of hyponymy, okay, we can look, have a look at this figure. We can have a look at this figure. For example, poodle is one type of dogs. Dog, horse, and snake are types of animals. Ant and cockroach are types of insects. Insects. So animals and insects are types of creatures. So this is hierarchical, hierarchical relation between words. One, the meaning of one form is included in the meaning of another. This is the this is hypona. Okay, you can just have a look at this figure, and you'll figure out the meaning of hyponymy. The meaning of Hyponym. And actually, for every single uh, lexical relation, yes, we have exceptions. We have exceptions. You have to to know those exceptions. You have to know those exceptions. So, the upper, okay, for example, we can read here. The superordinate is the higher level. every okay when it is higher in level it is super ordinate and lower okay we have lower okay lower levels also included in the super ordinate higher level okay and for example here we have the for the, the term Cohyponyms. That is two or more words that share the, sa the same superordinate term. Two or more words that share the same superordinate term. So, dog and horse are cohyponyms. They are at the same level. They are at the same level. And the superordinate term is animal they are both included horse horses and dogs are both animals they are animals the superordinate term is animals okay and the same thing applies to the other examples okay we have another another term that is 
prototypes. What's meant by prototypes is the first thing, the first thing that comes to your mind when you mention something. For example, when I say furniture, the first, the first thing that comes into your mind when I say furniture is, for example, chair. Sometimes they would say the best example of something. The best example of, for example, a group of things. The best example of a group of things. For example, we have got here an example. Canary, Carmora, Dove, Duck, Flamingo, Parrot, Pelican, and Robin. They are all they are co hyponyms okay they are uh, okay represented represented birds they are represented birds but they are not all considered to be equally good examples of the category bird we can just mention okay when i just, well, well, according to english when i mention bird the word bird the first thing to come into your mind or the best example of birds is robin okay as the best example for furniture is chair the best example is chair though though we have table this uh, we have beds whatever so but the best example or the first or the first example that comes into our mind when I say furniture is chair. As here in English, the first thing that comes into your mind when, it, when you say a bird is robin. So this is a prototype, the best example of, of, of a group of things. And actually, uh, helps this the prototype helps us to explain the meaning of certain words. Okay, for example, when you say, for example, bird, you will imagine a thing that has a feather or has wings. Okay, and for example, when you say. Uh, when you say uh, furniture, yes, it's actually mostly, mostly made of wood. So you will think of a carpenter. Okay. So these things uh, that will come into your mind when you think of furniture as the the first thing that comes into your mind when you mention the word bird uh, that uh, it has feathers and wings okay so it is the best example of a group of things or the first example that comes into your mind when you mention something okay homophones homophones and hom so what's homophones and homonyms okay for homophones, two or more different written forms have the same pronunciation. Two or more different forms have the same pronunciation. For example, beer, meat, meat, flower, flower, pale, pale, right. Right, so, so, two, 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 okay. Different, okay, written form, but with the same pronunciation. Different written forms, but with the same pronunciation. With the same pronunciation. This is homophones. So, what about homonyms homonyms okay one form 
has two or more unrelated meaning and actually this is something very important why when we uh, will discuss blasphemy okay the next section okay we have to be careful two so one form has two or more unrelated meanings okay one form okay okay one form has two unrelated meanings for example here bank of a river bank a financial institution إذن هنا عدنا حافة النهر أو ضفاف النهر والبنك وهو المؤسسة المالية so bank 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 two bank has two unrelated meaning the same word the same form the same pronunciation but two unrelated there's no relation between the bank as a financial institution and the bank of the river there's no relation between the two meanings uh, bat flying creature we know what's bat bat batman and bat used in sports this is it's like a, uh, a piece of wood that you hold it in your hands when someone throw a uh, a ball into you you can hit hit that ball with your that piece of wood that is bat المضرب also mole of skin okay and mole a small animal okay for example here race it's like for example car race and race or racism that is the uh, uh, now, now and actually now it's there in, in, in America there's a violence in, in the United States because of this race this there's a differentiation and in, in race racism along Syria so two different okay the same form with two different unrelated there's no relation there's no relation between car race and ethnic groups there's no relation in meanings okay so these are these are homophones and homonyms so we have to be careful why so here we have two or more unrelated there's no relation in meaning unrelated meaning to the opposite to the opposite of polysemy to the opposite of polysemy okay and that one word one word okay two two or more words with the same form and related meanings okay two or more words the same form with the same form okay so in in homonyms okay two or more words with the same form with unrelated meanings but here in polysemy we have related meanings we have related meanings for example when i say the word head the word head i can for example your head your head the uh, the body of a human is composed of some parts and one of those parts is your head and uh, for example the head when i say the head of the university rais al jamia Okay, so there there is a relation bet, uh, between the meanings. For example, the head it is the top of something, the top of something. Okay, so there's a relation. There's a relation. There's a relation in meaning, and we have here other other examples. For example, 
foot foot of, of a person okay your foot your feet sorry your feet and foot or feet of bed and طبعا قوائم السرير واقدام الشخص and foot of أو a mountain قدم الجبل أو أسفل الجبل أسفل الجبل okay we say we say foot of mountain so they have related related meanings they have yes we have different meanings uh, but related they are related they are related meanings okay and actually we have here some exceptions you can you can have a look at them you can have a look at some of those exceptions we'll come to the next section that is so uh, what's required from the student here again again and again uh, to um, uh, understand the the definition or what's meant by those lexical relations and you have to um, underline some examples so that you could understand understand what's meant by by every single lexical relation so here we have word play so word play word play is simply playing with the meanings of words playing or make a play for comics or okay make it something funny is to play with words and actually the uh, um, uh, homophones homonyms and polysemy are the main lexical relations that are used to play with words and uh, here for example we have uh, here sorry we have an example Mary had a little lamb so when we hear the word lamb we'll think of that small animal will think of that small animal but when we complete the sentence Mary had a little lamb some rice and vegetable okay so it is a meal it's not that animal it's not that animal it's a meal it's a meal you for example your lunch or your dinner okay so you will think of lamb as a piece of meat you will think of lamb as a piece of meat as the meaning allows as the meaning allows why because of blasphemy blasphemy of this word blasphemy of this word it means that lit uh, that small animal and also it meat it means a piece a piece of meat a piece of meat so all in all uh, it's playing playing with the meanings of words playing with the meanings of words and using using also the the sound using also the sounds metonymy Metonym. So, uh, what's meant by metonymy is whole part relation. Whole part relation. I'll give you one example, and I'll give it in Arabic so that you you could understand. Okay, when I say "قال البيت الأبيض أن كذا وكذا اوكي هل انه اوكي البيت اتس اكشلي اتس ا بيلدينج سو هاو ات سيز سمثينج سو اكشلي ذيرز ا سبيكر هو سيد سمثينج ذيرز ا سبيكر هو سيد سمثينج اتس نوت ذات بيلدينج بات تو ريبريزنت ذات ذات سبيكر اوكي وي سيد البيت or the, the white house announced 
the White House announced though it is a, a speaker who said so or the president the president of the United States said something أو قال قالت الحكومة العراقية it's a body but there's someone who announced announced that thing okay so this relation of whole part whole part uh, said to be uh, actually a representation for the uh, metonymy as a lexical relation so for, for example here uh, king crown the president the white house for example attach when i say attach قال التاج الملكي for example البريطاني تاج is a piece of metal ولكن but but okay it is the one who wears the the that that crown that is the king who said so and so so this is this is metonymy so what is metonymy it is using one of those words to refer to other as okay using one of those words to refer to other okay for example we have here another another uh, example for example when i say he drank the whole bottle it's a piece of a piece of a glass or glass object glass object so how could we how could we uh, how could he for example drank the that bottle actually he drank what's in the bottle he drank what's in or the liquid the liquid inside that bottle so instead of saying he drank the liquid inside the bottle we simply say we simply say he drank the whole bottle okay or for example yes here the white house has announced it's a person it's a speaker but okay in arabic we say al kinaya kinaya tan'an البيت الأبيض كناية for example عن الرئيس رئيس البلاد okay white house or downing street it's there in, in united kingdom okay so these are examples examples of examples of metonymy a whole part whole part relation whole part relation The next lexical relation in the final is collocation. Collocation. What's meant by collocation is that two words that occur occur together all the time. I'll give you an example in Arabic. I'll give you an example in Arabic. When I say, for example, رجل طويل but when I say uh, شجرة I would say باسقة I wouldn't say I, I, or I cannot say I cannot say رجل باسق no why? because of collocation so a word that usually comes comes with another word usually comes when uh, sorry comes with another so frequently occurring together two words frequently occurring together actually this is the simplest definition for collocation simplest okay for example here hammer 
نيل مطرقة والمسمار okay. Once you hear hammer You will think You will think of a nail Okay If you say table You will mostly say chair Table and chair Table and chair Hammer and nail Okay Butter and bread Butter and bread So Two words that usually or frequently occurring together. Okay, by this, by this, by this, uh, and I think this is the last, uh, the last uh, lecture delivered to you in this. Uh, in this semester and inshallah I'll try to um, meet you face to face in a live stream uh, I'll fix the appointment later inshallah and I'll let you know by this okay uh, uh, be ready for the exam and don't panic it is somehow easy uh, and the uh, and I'd like to, uh, I'd like to say uh, best wishes and best luck for you, best of luck for you in your examination, and try to uh, try to be ready for the exam, inshallah. And I'll try, as we have said, I'll try to meet you uh, in a live stream inshallah very soon okay until that time see you inshallah and uh, greetings greetings for you and uh, I'd like to uh, appreciate your efforts uh, exerted by you throughout this semester and uh, inshallah we'll meet very soon Thank you very much indeed for listening. Thank you very much and goodbye.